That's so funny. All right, we got audio now. I'll have to go back after this is done and edit out that first part where I was just talking with the thing on mute. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's <laughs> I just talked for like five minutes on mute. You guys can edit some good lip lip reading, lip sync edits of me saying ridiculous things. All right. So what I was saying before <laughs> was um, I was waiting for the comments to tell me that people can see me and hear me because the last time I did one of these hangouts, I ended up stopping the hangout because there was a huge delay between the time that I asked the question and the time that people actually responded. So I thought that nobody could see me or hear me. So I exited and ended it. I pushed stop broadcast in Google or you know YouTube. And I wasn't able to start it again. So we had to go into a different um, – like a whole different broadcast room or whatever. And a lot of the people that started out with us on that hangout might not have uh, might not have finished. <laughs> but here I am with sound. All right. Audio is back. People are saying, yeah, I know you guys can hear me. I had it on mute. Stupid me. And I was talking about how the last time I'd also made a stupid mistake and screwed up the live thing. But I'll edit out this beginning part for those of you who are watching at a later date. Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning if you're in, uh, I don't know, Australia or New Zealand. Or good evening if you're joining us from Europe. Um, nice to meet and see all of you people here watching live on YouTube. I'll just say if you want to be notified beforehand, before one of these live broadcasts, we usually send an email out. So if you go to the website, primaledgehealth.com, and you sign up on the right-hand side, I think there should be a bar that lets you sign up for updates and newsletters. Um, we'll never spam you, but we will send out some updates on when we're going to do these live events so you can join us and ask questions and have your questions hopefully answered if I get time or if I see them pop up amongst the many comments and questions that people throw down. So. Welcome. If you're new here, uh, this is when I come up here and talk a bunch <laughs> like a crazy person to myself and uh, all the people commenting that I can't even see, but they can see me. Oh, what a strange world it is. All right, so let's see. David Tawil says... Is he being trolled? No audio. No, there's, there's audio now. All right, let's see. We've got audio. Let's go down past all the people saying that there's no audio. <laughs> Julie Morris from Texas. What's up, Julie? Nicholas Berger wants to know my thoughts on reason to have abs slash stomach bloated on keto. <laughs> Woo! Blast in a sneeze. Ah. <sighs> Did you sneeze because you're a keto diet? You ketogenic diet? <laughs> Say the vegans. Not the vegans. The vegans who comment on these videos. All right. So the copper mug benefits. That's funny. Copper mug. Uh, I like the copper mug. Benefits. Proven benefits. I don't know. A lot in, in India, the in Ayurvedic medicine, they'll do a lot of copper vessel usage. A lot of us are short on copper. A lot of us aren't getting very much copper. Copper has antimicrobial, antibacterial properties. It is a very important trace mineral that we need in our body. Um, benefits of drinking from a copper cup, I don't know. looks kind of cool. I just I like how it gets really cold. You know, if you put cold water in it, this has just got some cold mineral water. And uh, I don't know I like how the copper feels. Like, I just like copper. It's, it's one of my favorite metals. I like copper. Benefits... Maybe debatable, but uh, like I said, it's antimicrobial, antibacterial properties, and uh, a lot of us are short on copper. Nicholas Berger is asking. Let me answer this question. Back from back to Nicholas. Bloated abs or stomach on keto? Bloated abs or stomach on anything? <laughs> keto doesn't cause bloated abs or stomach. So you started a ketogenic diet, and something that you're doing is resulting in you just having bloating and some inflammation going on there in the gut. Um, there's many things that could be going on there, Nicholas. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you could be dealing with a bacterial imbalance. And those bacteria, when they get that fuel source removed, there's certain fungus and bacteria that grow in the intestine, the lower intestine, the upper intestine. And when you get some of these bad bacteria 
overgrowing and feeding on sugars and starches and whatever else junk is in the diet. And they get out of balance due to, you know, even bacteria can even become imbalanced due to environmental toxins and environmental exposure. <laughs> Disrupted circadian rhythm can result in inflammation. So there's many things that could be going on here, but probably sort of a gut bacteria thing that you're dealing with. Or you're just doing more fiber than you're used to, and it's creating some fermentation in there. I don't know, but you know, you got gas, bloating, some kind of a fermentation going on. And uh, I mean, I don't know what you're eating, I don't know what, you, what you've got going on there, but that's a good place to start. You're dealing with some sort of a bacterial fungal imbalance, probably your gut microbiome a little bit off balance. So dig deeper into the gut microbiome research. Patrick Wolf says lost 65 pounds from your advice. That's so that's so cool, man. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick, for this the kind comment for, for shouting me out. Um, you didn't lose 65 pounds because of my advice. You lost 65 pounds because you happened to tune in at the right time. Some crazy person in the middle of Ecuador, middle of nowhere, um, blabbering about keto, and he gave you some advice that turned out to be useful for you. You took that advice and you did it. You implemented it. You executed it. I didn't help you lose 65 pounds. I never even met you. I just put this information out there for free, hoping to help some people. And that's awesome. Like, so I get a boost from that. I get to feel great and feel grateful that I was able to, you know, maybe pass on some information that helped you. And, uh, and it cost me nothing to do it. And, you know, just lots of time and energy, but you were the one who executed it. You're the one who did it. You're the one who implemented it. You lost 65 pounds. Congratulations. Keep it up, man. If you got more weight to lose, which, you know, if you lost 65 pounds, it's likely you got more to go. Keep it up. Keep going. Enjoy the ride. It's not a linear journey to recognize that it's not linear. Not every single day are you going to step on the scale and see it go lower and lower. That's just not how it works. It's more like a sine wave. But the overall trend is downward. All right, all right, all right. TJ, something or nothing. Aloha from Hawaii. Cool. What's up, man? We got people from the Netherlands. Florist Estorgi. All right. Let's see. What else we got here? Low calorie if metabolism damages. All right. So. Maybe English is the second language there. I'm not sure that I'm understanding the exact question. Um, let's see. All right. I'm pulling up the live chat in a separate window because there's so many comments that I can't see. I can't see them all. And it cuts off a lot of the ones that are above. Wow. Thanks for joining, everybody. There's a lot of people watching, a lot of people commenting. Um, Let's see. Hello, 152 pounds and 5'11", highly active. How many grams of fat and protein should I eat for muscle gain? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's – look, five, you're asking me to formulate your diet for you through a one-sentence comment on YouTube. That's not going to happen. That can't happen. Um, oh, you guys want to say hi to Jessica? Want to see what I'm having for lunch? Jessica, look at – wait, let's, let's just see the, peep the whole scene here. It's pretty funny. What's that? This thing's not Don't very focused. Focus, focus, <laughs> focus, camera, focus. Rider's in the middle of a teething battle. Can I be loud? No. No. She comes over here in the middle of the hangout, shushes me. I tell you to be quiet. Tells me to be quiet. <laughs> that she wants to show me some food. What did you make? Is this I something made... from the from the cookbook? Actually, it is. This is the this is the off the author of the ketogenic <laughs> edge cookbook. The author. She gave me an, a writer credit for some reason. Love very you. generous. Yeah, well, I did write some of the chapter introductions. Mm -hmm. You're very yeah. helpful. Pretty awesome. So, yeah, the Ketogenic Edge Cookbook, which thank you, everybody, for buying it, for enjoying it, for leaving good reviews. Um, please, if you bought it and you enjoy it, leave a review on the website. It really helps us out. It does help us if you leave a review. I know it takes a lot of time and energy to actually type it out, go on the website, leave a review. But it's awesome when you guys do, and the fact that people feel so passionately about it that they take the time to write us emails thanking us and it's very, you know, it's, very, cool. it's very inspiring. It's very encouraging. Yeah. It's super encouraging and inspiring. Mm -hmm. Inspiring, not expiring. Because the book will never expire. <laughs> it will always hold value. It's awesome. Um, what, what you've been talking about making a recipe video. We've been mm. you know, we do we work really hard sometimes <laughs> and uh, you know, you you see the content we put out 
we put out a lot of stuff. So, and meeting with clients and everything too. So we haven't got a chance to film this recipe video, but it's one of my favorites. I like these meatballs. Um, she called what do they call it in the recipe book? It's a modification on the mama's best meatball. Mama's best meatball. Mm -hmm. It sounds like such an old lady recipe. Well, it's it's heritage. It's, it's a heritage recipe. Vintage. Well, now it is vintage. Whoa. Vintage. <laughs> Mama's best meatball recipe. So she did a variation on that using organ meats, mm -hmm. right? I use ground beef heart. Now, organ meats. A lot of people, this is like a mystical thing. A lot of people are like, oh, it's so weird. It sounds so esoteric or disgusting or gross. Nah, um, a matter. great introduction, a good gateway organ meat is beef heart. It is so good. It's really, really delicious. You could just saute it. You could slice it up into little slivers and saute it. Is there a recipe for like, are there, mm -hmm. There's a bunch of. <laughs> we have a whole chapter in the book. An entire chapter in yeah. this book, I think dedicated four recipes in total to organ meats, yeah. organ meat recipes, Exclusive. and there's a few heart recipes in there, aren't there? Mm -hmm. I really like this modification. She takes the Mama's Best Meatballs recipe, does 50% ground beef heart, which if you just go to your local butcher or wherever you buy grass-fed beef from, get some grass-fed beef heart mixed in with your normal ground beef, and uh, this is the result, right? Her. And it's paired with some spiralized. It's so hard to see. Spiralized zucchini pasta. Should I hold it still? Okay. Ooh, you can twist that so you can see the very bad lighting. Hard for you to see, but those things are so good. And I love the zucchini pasta. It's awesome. It has olive oil and garlic, uh, green powder, and avocado and kelp. <laughs> I put some seaweed so in there. She too. used a spiralizer to spiralize mm -hmm. zucchini. Which but you if you don't have one, no worries because in our book, we also have a recipe for the zucchini linguini. She shows you how to make those it. zucchini linguini when and you, you don't, don't even have the fancy ingredients. You don't need the, the fancy, fancy spiralizer. Yeah. Which is only, what, like 25 bucks or something? Uh, yeah. She was so stoked when we got the spiralizer. I thought it was kind of silly. It was it's like, super why, fun, but it's frivolous. Like, what is this thing? Like, yeah. why do you, why do you got to turn zucchini? into little strings what's the point cool. but she got it and ariana loves it so much they have so much fun it's like legit pasta yeah. you know and for me it's like i don't care if like the zucchini is this shape or that shape but hey for kids and stuff like that if you're trying mm -hmm. to get your kids to eat healthy you know you get them involved with the process and just doing things like spiralizing the zucchini or she likes to spiralize carrots and beets mm -hmm. um or sweet potatoes you can spiralize for kids. If you're on a ketogenic diet, of course, carrots, beets, sweet potatoes, these won't be a major part of your diet. Sweet potatoes won't be in there at all. The other will beets. Um, but if you've got kids, um, obviously, there's no if there's no reason to put your kid on a ketogenic diet, which in most, in most cases, there is no reason to put your kid on a ketogenic diet, um, they're going to be eating with you. And you can make delicious things like this and make modifications on it for your kids too, uh, which it's funny because the book's called The Ketogenic Edge Cookbook. A training manual for low carb ketogenic and paleo cuisine. And we called it a training manual because that's what it is. It's it's a training manual. It's more than just a cookbook. There's an entire chapter showing you how to use organ meats. Entire chapter showing you how to use spices. And I talk about this every single hangout because it's it's like I'm, just, I'm so excited that people actually like it. That she spent over a year writing it. It was a family project. We all worked on it mm -hmm. together for over a year. It's finally done. It's finally ready. And um. It's available exclusively at PrimalEdgeHealth.com. The um, feedback has been amazing. Every like, single copy that sells, she actually donates a smile to me. <laughs> Makes her smile. She gets all happy. <laughs> she gets stoked. She worked freaking hard on this book, and uh, it shows. You know the little details that she put in there, like the fact that they all got macros. Every single recipe's got macros. And those macros are all fat loss friendly. And she shows you how to manipulate them, how to add or subtract fats or protein. And it gives you suggestions for a lot of these recipes on how you can modify them for people that are eating more carbs. Like if you've got kids or a family or a husband or a wife that's not on the same diet as you, she even shit like tells you straight up in these recipes how to modify it. You know, add some sweet potatoes for the kids or this or that. Just muted it down back. <laughs> Actually, I started off and I was on mute for like five minutes talking. Nice. Yeah, typical, right? Mm. I would. All right. Will you guys enjoy? There you go. I She's going to go enjoy the meatballs. I would eat them if I wasn't hanging out with all you guys. So there you go. Right. As you're watching this, know that you're depriving me of delicious meatballs. Mm. I'll save you some. Poor me. Oh. Did you like the meatballs? Yeah. All right, check it out, Ariana. I am interested. Ariana's cruising. She's got a baby. What's your baby's name? Baby, baby. I have a two-year-old. You have a baby... A baby that's how old? A month old and then a two year old. 
and this baby is how old? The one, one in month. the one month. Wow, I really like your stroller. It's pretty awesome. All right, you guys have fun. Take care of your baby. Okay. My grandbaby, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm back. Now I'll answer questions. That was the obligatory me fawning over my wife's awesome cookbook and telling you how awesome it is. <laughs> um, this is all my notes from some client meetings today. Okay. Let's get back to business. Joaquin Carlos Araujo lost 79 pounds on keto, 20 more to go. 79 pounds. Ow! That's amazing. That's that's as much as like some small people weigh, you know? You lost one person worth of yourself. Congratulations. All right. Sean Kelly. Yo, what's up, Trist? Shortened my name. Sean. Slippery slope there. Question. Wondering. If you'll make some videos in the future about the importance of infrared light, certain vitamins and hormones and things like that. I talk about this stuff all the time. The importance of infrared light. What do you mean infrared? What do you mean the importance of infrared light? What infrared light? All infrared, everything, all heat is infrared light. It's infrared radiation. All heat, I mean, but yeah, I mean, the importance of circadian rhythms of the light cycles, the light that you're exposed to, being exposed to natural light in the morning, minimizing the exposure to nap to unnatural light rather in the evening to help your melatonin production in the evening and in the morning to blunt the cortisol response and actually lower your blood sugar by creating vitamin D um, and creating nitric oxide in the skin. Um, I mean, UVA, UVB light is very, very important. Infrared light as well. But I mean, we, we got to get more specific there. Um, anyways, thanks for the question. Um, that was a very broad question. I mean, I'm talking about hormones, vitamins, micronutrients, light cycle, circadian rhythms. I'm talking about this stuff all the time. <laughs> all right, Lisa Woods, what do you suggest for a chronic yo-yo dieter to not gain on keto? <laughs> Great question. All right, so because of what I do the content I put out, the type of people that usually come to me for coaching, I work with a lot of people who've done yo-yo dieting in the past. Unless you break that cycle of yo-yo dieting, you're not going to be successful on any diet. I don't care what diet you're on. If you're just like you do the fad diet, you do it for a couple months, do it for a few weeks, and you bounce right back, something's going on. You're allowing yourself to be lulled back into past behaviors, to be hypnotized back into a state of submission to habits that don't suit you and your actual goals or actually bring you life. Like really, I mean, what the yo-yo dieting. So you start out by making progress. You make good progress towards fat loss. You make good progress on rearranging your lifestyle, rearranging your habits. And then gradually we get lulled back to sleep by the excuses, by – listening to the old programs, running in the back of the mind that pull you back into those behaviors that you don't want to be engaging in. So you've got to break the cycle. you got to understand what is it that keeps you fascinated and hypnotized by the old cycle. And it can be something as simple as that's just what's comfortable to me. That's what I'm used to. That's what I've done five times now in the last 10 years. That's what a lot of people go through. You know, they'll lose the same 20 pounds and gain it back all over again several times a year um and if that's what you're used to it's like it's a habit you know it's a subconscious behavior pattern that just repeats itself over and over again like a record just playing over and over again on repeat so you got to step out of the cycle you have to apply yourself i don't care what diet you're on you've got to figure out what are the triggers what are the roadblocks the stumbling blocks and the fissures in the system that are creating this. What is allowed? What's pulling you back into the old cycle? Is it? Does it happen when you get stressed? Does it happen when you get depressed? Does it happen seasonally? You know, it's like a lot of people get seasonal depression. The winter time, locked inside, snowing outside. It's all cold. You can't go anywhere. Can't do anything. People get depressed. They start eating a bunch. They get fat. I mean, what, what is the trigger? What is it that in the past has pulled you back in this cycle? you got to cover all your bases and map out the territory and don't step on the same landmines again. 
All right. Hope that helps. Julie Morris says, would love to hear about how you feed your kids. Obviously, Whole Foods, but can you give them, but do you give fruit some of the time or seasonally or whatever is ripe in said season? Good question. Where we live in the Andes of Ecuador, we've got fruits available year round. You know, we've got banana trees all around the yard. Um, so, yeah, I mean, our daughter eats fruit as much as she wants. She's a growing child. Uh, we don't. You know, for adults who've grown up in a perpetual summer, right? We've grown up in a land of perpetual summer where we can heat and light any environment that we want. We also have food year-round, carbohydrates, sugar, high nutrient-density food, high calorie-density food available to us year-round. And we get this kind of – this disease of excess, this obesity, this disease of – it's a disease of excess, right? Call it what it is. When you got a five-year-old kid, it's like I'm not, I'm not worried about my kid becoming obese. She's, she, she just said she's four. She corrected me. Thank you, Ariana. She'll be five. In, she's almost five. She'll be five in about four weeks, which is on May 7th, which she's saying, which you guys could hear. It's super funny. Um, yeah, there's no reason to you know enforce a ketogenic diet on our kids. Um, yeah, she eats fruit. She eats carbohydrates. She eats what she wants. But she eats nutrient dense whole foods. We don't give her, you know, wheat, gluten. Uh, we don't give her grains. We don't keep sugar, or anything like that around. She doesn't, you know, buy. She doesn't eat candy, any of that crap. She eats good food. She eats the foods we eat. She eats the foods that she eats that we don't eat. You know, she likes sweet potatoes, carrots, beets. She loves honey. Um, so we get good local organic. She likes honey and yogurt. She likes goat's milk. She likes cow milk. She likes yogurt. I mean, she likes all these delicious heritage foods that people have been eating for thousands of years. So she eats a nutrient-dense whole foods diet. No processed crap, no grains. I mean, I guess you could call her diet, I guess you could call it a paleo diet, you know? People like to load up terms of what they mean and assume things. But yeah, I guess her daughter eats more like a paleo-style diet. Whole foods, nutrient-dense foods, fruits and vegetables, healthy fats and proteins. Frederick John, hi, what's the difference between refined, hydrogenated, and virgin coconut oil? The virgin oil is four to seven times as expensive as refined or hydrogenated coconut oil. Good question. Virgin coconut oil is just that. It's virgin. It's unrefined. It's cold pressed. It's not heated. It's not hydrogenated. They're not breaking any of the saturated fatty, bond, uh, fatty acid bonds. Go for the whole unrefined stuff if you can. You can get it very reasonably priced online. Um, this hydrogenated stuff, I mean, these are mass-produced, industrialized, modified, highly refined foods. Still better than vegetable oil. <laughs> Still better than, uh, you know, soybean oil, corn oil, canola oil. But, yeah, go for the unrefined stuff. Go for the virgin, extra virgin coconut oil. That just means it's not heated. It's not tampered with. It's just straight up pressed from the meat of the coconut. All right. David Tawil says, I can lift as heavy but less reps ever since I began keto five years ago. I look slightly flatter, but everything else feels normal and better. I love the mental clarity. The gains are the same as before. Yeah, you know, it's like you, you might feel like you look a little bit flatter, but I mean, it's just you probably look leaner anyways. You hold less water weight, meaning your muscles might be a little bit flatter. But you're holding less water weight, so you're lighter on your toes. You feel more nimble. Your inflammation is lower. Um, and you're still able to make strength gains, just like you said. So keep it up, man. That's awesome. You're doing well. Um, it, yeah, it is normal for people to feel like they look a little bit flatter, feel like they've lost a little bit of fullness. But it does come back. After the adaptation phase, give it some time. Give it a few months. The strength will still be there, and you're still going to make gains just like before. And of course, carbohydrates are very anabolic and very good for putting on muscle mass. So depending on your sensitive, sensitivity to them or the usefulness of carbs to you, you know, you might get different results with keto. You just got to see. You got to get adapted to it and enjoy it. All right, all right, all right. H. Majed. Majed. Hello, 152 pounds, 5'11", high. Oh, you already, you already saw that question. I can't give you a diet from one sentence over YouTube comments, guys. All right. Let's see here. TJ something or nothing 
starting keto for the first time, coming off high carb, high fruit diet. Is it better to ramp down the carbs or go cold turkey? Good question. TJ, you know what? I go back and forth sometimes. You know, yeah, it can be nice to ramp down the carbs, but just go for it, man. Just ju just jump into it. Like, what's the reason? Like, there's really, if you're relatively healthy, I mean, you've been experimenting on your body, seeing what works, just change over quickly. I, know, I mean, you can either do it instantly and see what happens. You probably get minimal um, difficulties uh, as long as you get your electrolytes in check. As long as you're getting enough electrolytes, you'll be fine. Make sure that you know how to, you know, create meals that'll fit your macros, that'll fit, that'll give you the amount of protein required and enough fat, but not too much fat to where you're not able to burn body fat if burning body fat is the goal. And uh, yeah, you know, check out the Ketogenic Edge Cookbook if you want to get some ideas or actually get trained and be a, how to be a proper proper <laughs> keto master chef like Jessica. Um, I mean, there's like five years of keto. No, like three and a half or four years. I don't even know how long I've been doing this now. Three and a half or four years of keto knowledge distilled into this book. Uh, basically, we set out to make the book that we would have wanted when we first started out. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff in there. You'll like it. Check it out, man. But yeah, uh, cold turkey, ramp down the carbs. Either way, I would say you're better just going cold turkey. If you're going to ramp down the carbs, start by just just have carbs in the morning. Then for the last two meals, eat keto style meals, and then pull out that last carb meal. Or I'm sorry, the first carb meal. Pull that out after like three or five days. But go on cold turkey. You're not going to have any crazy withdrawals or anything. You'll be fine. Okay. Floris Astorgi, I'm trying to gain weight. Any tips? Context, right? So you're trying to gain weight. Why are you trying to gain weight? Uh, is it because you're underweight or is it because you're just trying to add lean muscle mass to increase strength for athletic endeavors or you just feel like it? <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're underweight, history of, you know, anorexia, bulimia, stuff like that, and you're doing a ketogenic diet and you want to gain weight, can be a little bit harder to gain weight on keto, honestly. But if you're just trying to gain lean muscle mass, if you're not like you know emaciated or you know trying to recuperate your your monthly cycle because you've dieted down for fitness competition or something, and you've lost fertility, which happens to women all the time, we get clients all the time, women who thought it was you know got really in fitness and then they wanted to compete because they got tricked into thinking that this was a great idea. I got to get on stage and compete. And they just completely trash their hormone panel, lose their fertility. And um, all kinds of other health problems pop up afterwards. So if that's your situation, then a ketogenic diet might be useful because you can gain you can gain quality mass without gaining too much body fat. Because in a lot of those situations, there's psychological things going on as well. And people have body image issues. So I mean, there's so many possible contexts. But gaining weight on keto is just like any other diet. Get sufficient protein, and fats are going to make up the energy portion of the diet. So if you're trying to be on a ketogenic diet, carbs aren't going to change much. You know, if you're trying to gain weight, maybe just add a little bit of carbs, a little bit more carbohydrate, 10, 20 grams more carbs can be helpful. But if you want to do straight up keto, fat is what you want to adjust. So your protein will stay relatively fixed depending on context. That could be from anywhere from like 0.5 up to 0.8, even as high as one gram per pound of your lean body mass, not your body mass, your lean body mass. Body mass minus the fat mass. So get sufficient protein in and then fats will be the rest. You know, eat a bunch of fats. <laughs> Try to gain weight. Um, eat more fats to gain weight. Eat less fats to lose body fat. To tap into your own body fat, you can't have hundreds of grams of fat on the plate and expect to burn hundreds of grams of fat of your own body fat. That's just basic energy balance, and it does matter on keto. And I'm not saying calories in, calories out explains uh, explains everything. You know, calorie like, just both sides are ridiculous, right? Well, calories in, calories out. It's all that matters. You just tell someone to restrict calories and they lose weight. Well, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because hormones do play a role in how much caloric intake we desire. You know, it's I mean, there's a, if your hormones are all screwed up and you're insulin resistant. You're going to be hungrier. Your blood sugars be all over the place, and you're going to be medicating with food more, and you're going to be more prone to gaining weight. So, yeah, I mean, a ketogenic diet makes it seems to make it more difficult to gain body fat because the hormonal profile that you're going for on keto 
makes it very conducive to high satiety and low hunger. And that's the magic of keto. Not that it makes calories inert and it's just like, eat as much fat as you want. You're going to lose body fat. That's not how it works. What happens though is when you do eat a ketogenic diet, you get so unhungry. <laughs> it's a scientific term there. You get so unhungry that it makes it really, really easy to lose body fat long term. So there you go. All right. Rico says, what is your staple fish? Staple fish. <laughs> I like sardines. I'm really into sardines. I love them. I love how they taste. Got like five different brands that I like. Um, Matisse makes really good sardines. They're imported from Spain. You can get them in the States. One moment. <clears throat> I like to show my side. What's that, Ari? I love you so much. This is so sweet. I love you, little girl. Um, Matisse sardines are imported from Spain. They're very, very good. Um, what else? Like a, I think Crown was a Crown Prince makes some good ones from Norway. And then you know Wild Planet's got like some Pacific sardines that are pretty good too. I mean, there's <laughs> I like sardines. That's my go-to fish. Thanks for the question, Rico Gomez. Thank you very much, Frederick John Tang. What's the verdict on peanuts? Good or bad? context <laughs> look i mean nothing like peanuts are they good or are they bad uh, all right high in omega-6 it's an inflammatory polyunsaturated fatty acid and anything that's going to significantly boost your inflammatory highly oxidative and reactive fatty acids like omega-6s anything that's going to boost those up is not ideal <laughs> So it's not the ideal food. It's not this amazing superfood, or it's not. Oh well, it's vegan, so it's cool. It's all. I mean, it's all about how you're looking at it, right? Uh, I'm of the opinion that omega six fatty acids should be minimized in the diet, but I'm also the opinion that peanuts are delicious. So <laughs> that's kind of them. They look. They taste really good. They're easy to eat a lot of. They got a lot of omega six. So if you eat way too many of them, they can cause some more inflammation in the body. Uh, if you can eat them in reasonable quantities and they're not a main staple of the diet, there shouldn't be a problem. So, yeah, that's my verdict on peanuts. It's all about context. If you can't handle them, you can't have a few peanuts with a meal. If you got just wah, 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 eat so many of them, then there might be a trigger food that you should avoid. Um, they're not bad in and of themselves. But, look, I mean, you're not going to be – a healthy diet is not going to be based all around peanut butter. <laughs> TJ something or nothing says zucchini pasta is delicious. Awesome. Yeah, Ariana, or I'm sorry, Jessica really likes the, the zucchini pasta. Flores says, I'm trying to bulk slash gain weight while doing high fat, low carb, and intermittent fasting. Can it be done? All right, you're trying to gain weight and bulk. Why are you doing intermittent fasting? You're, you're trying to get like the best of all worlds, right? Autophagy, fat loss from intermittent fasting, ketogenic diet, and bulking. Pick one. If you're trying to gain weight, don't intermittent fast. That's one thing that I'm, one thing I'm gonna say from what you told me. Um, if you're a client of mine, you came to me. That's what you told me. That the goals of the gain weight. I'd say first of all, no intermittent fasting. If you're trying to gain weight, drop the intermittent fasting. Um, you know, I mean, you're probably gonna want to increase your protein a little bit. If trying to gain weight, ten to twenty grams, probably enough to increase your protein above your maintenance calories. Use fat for the rest of the caloric surplus. And, um, you know, it's kind of trial and error with how much of a surplus to do. You know, I mean, you don't know what your exact metabolic rate is. It's impossible to know. None of these calculators online are going to be accurate. So you test. You use your knowledge of what you've done in the past with your body or what people in a similar situation have done. Um, and you test out certain macros. So maybe increase your fats by 30 grams, your protein by 10 to 20 grams. Do that consistently. That should get you putting on some lean mass without putting on too much fat mass. Hope that helps. I just did what I promised I wouldn't do to the other guys. That I'm not going to give you a diet online. But that's basic general guidelines, right? It doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody. It's context dependent. It's intention dependent. And it's dependent. And, and the ideal program for you also depends on what have you done in the past? Like what do you know about how your body reacts to certain stimulus? Uh, all right. Frederick says, yep, yep, beef heart's great flavor. Yeah, beef heart is so good. I love it. It's super good. Ariana, do you like beef heart? Yeah. Now, how come you don't eat it so much anymore? 
It's a picky food when they get older. Zhao Paolo Miranda says, Hi, Tristan, Jessica, good to see you. I'm concerned with the amounts of calories on the diet. Find it difficult to eat a good amount of fat and still control the caloric intake. Please share some light. All right, so you're probably... All right. <laughs> Most of the information out there, the recipes you're going to find online, they're going for like ridiculous amounts of fat. And this is one of the reasons why we had to make the cookbook like we made it. Why we made the Ketogenic Edge Cookbook a training manual for low carb, ketogenic, and paleo cuisine. Here's another shameless plug. Yeah, I, this. I mean, it's it, there is so much value in this book. It's ridiculous. I, I can't praise Jessica enough for the job she's done on this. Um, and I'm not just biased because she's my wife and I love her and she's amazing. Um, so let's see. Getting a good amount of fat in with a controlling the caloric intake. You've probably been led to believe that you need to eat more fat than you actually need. If you're trying to lose body fat, you don't need over 200 grams of fat. It's ridiculous. If you're trying to lose body fat, you need to be eating some body fat every day. If you eat too much dietary fat, you're not going to tap into body fat long term. So you need to formulate meals that don't have 100 grams of fat in each meal. You know, I mean, you might be going, the ideal amount of fat for each meal for you might be 50 grams. If you're bigger, it might be 60 grams. It might be as low as 40 grams per meal if you're doing three meals a day. So formulate meals that you can consistently eat, that you enjoy, that are good for you, that fit your macros, and that are nutrient-dense foods. Formulate meals around that. Fill up with protein and vegetables because that's what creates satiety. And I'm not saying eat all the protein you can. People love to misinterpret and take things to the utmost extreme and nitpick, right? Get sufficient protein in. We talked about how much protein earlier in the, in the broadcast. Get sufficient protein. Eat vegetables because those will fill you up without giving you a whole bunch of caloric intake. Not, they're not energy. The vegetables are fiber, micronutrients. And there's not a lot of energy in them that's usable by your body, which is good. So eat those veggies. That will keep you full. And then fats to fit your macros. But uh, if you're looking for nutrient-dense, whole foods-based meals, all whole foods-based, none, no crazy ingredients that you're not going to be able to find. Like there's a few recipes that have got some more refined ingredients like that you might have to order online or something. But none of them are based around that. It's all about foods that you can find, that anybody can source no matter where you live. We wrote this book and made it here in the Andes of Ecuador where it can be really hard to get a lot of foods. You know, we live kind of in the middle of nowhere in freaking mud hills called the Andes. And uh, it's there's not a lot of stuff that you can get here that you can get in other uh, more, I don't even want to use the word, like modern <laughs> places. So, yeah, you've got to formulate meals that fit your macros, and you've got to just – Quit using the wrong recipes, man. So you want a training manual on how to do it, how to make nutrient-dense meals, how to fit your macros. All the recipes in the Ketogenic Edge cookbook have macros, and they're all fat loss friendly macros, not 100 grams of fat per meal. Um, they're all fat loss friendly. And she even included information. We even included how to modify the macros of all the meals by adding or subtracting certain ingredients to fit your macronutrient needs. So yeah, just don't eat so much fat, eat vegetables, well, for, you formulate meals that fit your macros. We've got loads of recipes for free on our website, primaledgehealth.com. Check out some of those recipes, use them, abuse them, and enjoy them. Garland says, is that a salt lamp behind you? Where's the salt lamp? There. Yeah, there is a salt lamp. All right. Keith Williams says, what's up, T and family? It's a beautiful sunny day here in Houston. Keep on keeping on. Well, thank you, Keith Williams. Yoel C. Hutchinson, why can I only manage three days of straight, high-fat, low-carb, even though I feel good while eating this way? This is what we talked about earlier. You're getting lulled back in the old cycle. Look, if you're going to do it, just, just go for it. If you are going to do it, you got to give yourself at least six weeks. Plan your meals ahead of time. Plan the meals out beyond just three days. Get consistent meals that will get your macros. Hit them consistently. And meals that you can enjoy. Get a variety of protein and fat sources in there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's – I can't tell you why it is you're giving in to jumping back in the old cycle, even though you feel good. 
You're saying you feel good on that diet and you're doing something that feels right, yet you're still unable to go beyond three days. So is there something that's some schism in your consciousness that's making you reject feeling good and enjoying life? That's like that's a serious question. Because we all we've got these things, these habits that we formulate, these habits that we uh we formulate, these habits that formulate us, these habits that's that lock us in. We get in bondage to these habits, and these habits create pockets of reality that we don't want to be in. Depression, anxiety, inflammation. These we're created by habits, by lifestyle, by how we interact in our environment, how we choose to be, what we choose, what thoughts we choose to attach to, what thoughts we choose to listen to, the people we choose to surround ourselves with, the words that come out of our mouth. These things create us, create our reality. Not create us, but form it. And the creator creates. We just formulate manipulate so what is it that's that's lulling you back to sleep why are you giving in to the same habits that got you feeling crappy in the first place and why if you found some way of rearranging your environment your life your habits that works and makes you feel better why aren't you accepting that as a better reality than what's behind you and what you're trying to move away from it's, it's got to lock in. Sometimes we have to get on a, a, a path that suits us and that's right for us. Sometimes we have to veer off it every once in a while to appreciate what we really had and to appreciate, oh, yeah, I do want that. That's what I want. You know, sometimes we listen to the wrong influences. We just we take detours that we don't need to take. And then we get back on the highway. So get back on the highway and stick to it, you know? It's like if there's something you've decided to do and that road leads to a destination, the reaching of that destination has to be more important than the temporary transitory pleasure of being back in that old comfortable cycle. Nothing good gets established. Nothing good happens in our comfort zone. We don't learn anything in our comfort zone. So get out of the comfort zone. Push into new territory. Keep on moving forward. Thanks for the question. All right, Sean Kelly. Near infrared light, the effects of the mitochondria and how important it is to your body. A lot of people on here for keto and weight loss. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, near infrared saunas, I mean, a lot of benefits, a lot of possible benefits from those. The effects on mitochondria, how important it is to your body. Look, there's a lot of stuff out there, man. There's a lot of information on all these things. And you know, dig into it, man. Near infrared saunas can be very beneficial. I actually prefer dry saunas and steam saunas, though, because they get hotter. <laughs> Those infrared saunas don't get hot enough for me. I like it fiery. You're dragging blood. All right. Bert Kisto says, would the keto diet help raise your HDL and lower your LDL? In many cases, it does, Bert, but it's all context dependent, right? Cholesterol is not only depending on dietary factors. Um, if your diet is leading to inflammation, that usually can lead to increased cholesterol. Cholesterol by itself, I'll say this, cholesterol by itself doesn't seem to be the boogeyman that it used to be made out to be. It doesn't seem to be this monstrous killer that's just lurking around in your arteries waiting to strike at any moment and kill you. That's not how it really works. Um, so dig a little bit deeper into cholesterol. Cholesterol is required for making vitamin D. Cholesterol is required for precursors to sex hormones. To make testosterone, you need cholesterol. To make vitamin D, you need cholesterol. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, a ketogenic diet, a lot of people can lower LDL and raise HDL, which is the so-called good cholesterol. But... There's more to be explored as far as cholesterol goes versus just straight up numbers, HDL, LDL. LDL bad, HDL good. It's a little bit deeper than that. You look at the particle size of LDL, a lot more going on. 
All right, MJ, physical G's and phantom squad. Hey, Tristan, do you weigh your meat and fish before or after cooking? Not sure. It doesn't tell you on the nutrition facts. That's a good question, man. Before cooking, raw weight. That's a really good question. Raw weight. So, yeah, before you cook that ground beef, it's one pound. After you cook that ground beef, a lot of the water is evaporated out. You're doing raw weight. Good question. And thank you for that question. Thomas Mitteros. Hello again. I'm a master of science nutrition student. I was wondering if you could suggest some research topics for me to prove a point in. I really trust your opinion towards the keto. Oh, thank you. All right, look, man. Your master's, you're going for your master's degree in nutrition. I don't know. I mean, we were just talking about cholesterol, right? There's a good thesis right there. <laughs> There's something with loads of new research on. I mean, even just ketogenic diets, high fat diets, saturated fats, a re examination of saturated fats, role in the development of heart disease. These are all really interesting topics, man. Um, yeah, I mean, just pick one and dive into it, man. No matter what, like this, the reality is amazing, right? There's all these other little bubbles in reality, and you can zoom right where are you, right in on these little bubbles, and you can zoom in as close, and the closer you zoom in, it's just everything gets it's it's interesting. No matter what you look at under the lens, it becomes interesting, it becomes fascinating, and you start to see the connections all around you. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's all amazing, right? Like anything you start to dive into deep enough becomes completely fascinated. An intelligent person, an intelligent person become fascinated, uh, can become fascinated quite easily because uh, we live in a profoundly fascinating reality. So yeah, just dive into something, man. Whatever you're into. Congratulations on getting the master's degree. I guess maybe, I don't know, if you're looking for a thesis, you'll probably be done with it, what, next year? But, uh, yeah, congratulations. Best of luck to you. Venet Mustafa. Should keto workout be more anaerobic or aerobic, exercise-oriented, glycogen or fat-fueled? This is, it's a funny thing. I get this question quite often. I think there must be people talking, like saying that there's only one way to do this. Look, uh, you can do whatever type of exercise you desire on a ketogenic diet. If you're into endurance training, you can do it on keto. If you're into a heavy weight lifting, you can do it on keto. If you're into power lifting, you can do it on keto. If you're into bodybuilding style workouts, you can do it on keto. There's no contraindication. You can do high intensity. You can do moderate intensity. You can do low intensity. You can do it all. But while you're adapting, what you do want to make sure is you're not stressing your body out more than you need. When you're adapting a ketogenic diet, adopting a ketogenic diet and adapting to it, it, it can be kind of like a low-level stressor almost, right? You're pulling out glucose, your main source of fuel for years and years and years. You're removing that, and you're giving yourself a new fuel source. You're changing over how you burn fuel, the fuel that you burn. Uh, that can be stressful. You're used to the glucose. It's gone. Ah, give us a glucose. You've been in a perpetual summer. Suddenly, you're going into a ketogenic winter. Um, so while you're going through that transition for the first few weeks, just decrease the intensity. Don't go too nuts. Your strength's going to go down for those couple weeks while you're adapting. Your endurance is going to go down. You're going to get winded quicker, but... It will come back. It takes a little while to get that energy back, but you will get the benefits. And the more time you put into it, the more benefits you can get. There are ultra marathon runners who do ketogenic diets. There are power lifters who do ketogenic diets. They can suit whatever athletic endeavors you desire if it fits into the context, right? It's not perfect for everybody. I'll never come on here and tell you, oh, keto is the only way to go. Keto is the only diet. We're going to come here and BS you like that. There's a lot of different ways you can go about things. I happen to enjoy being in ketosis most of the time. I live in a place where carbohydrates are available year-round, but I still choose to be in ketosis because I like how it feels. I like how my brain functions on ketosis and on a keto diet. I like how my body functions on it. It doesn't mean it's perfect for everybody. It doesn't mean that I'll never get out of ketosis. I'm going to do keto the rest of my life. Rawr, keto or die. It works for me for now. It's worked for me for almost four years, I think, you know, four years. And I don't see myself stopping, <laughs> you know, but I'll come out of ketosis every once in a while. I'm going to come in here and be the extremist, got to be keto, got to be keto all the time. 
look, seasonal carbohydrates, there's nothing wrong with them. So yeah, there it goes. So there's so many questions, so many comments. Thanks everybody for joining. 241, Kevin Doyle, David to Will. David, you've asked so many. I can't answer. I can't uh, I can't answer any of yours, David. I gotta answer other people's. Carrie, MJ, Thomas, Fleets Enema. Beautiful name, by the way. Um, what's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining. Let's see. What are your thoughts on long fast, like 10 days or more? Man, this comes up almost every every hangout now. Long fasts, fasting. Fasting is a powerful tool. All powerful tools deserve awe and respect. Any powerful tool deserves respect. It's got to be used carefully. Um, fasting. In every single spiritual tradition ever, fasting is a major part of it. Um, I don't suggest long-term fasting to any clients that I work with. I don't guide them through it. It's not, it's just not part of, it's not something that I would promote. And here's why. I think fasting is such a strong and powerful tool that it can be dangerous for some people. And some people can get like, go way too far with it, fast themselves to illness. And other people can just open themselves up to all kinds of manipulation and BS. When you fast, you get into a highly vulnerable state. When you fast, you become hyper aware and hypersensitive to your environment. That's why they use like starvation in like the NK Ultra experiments, the early MK Ultra experiments, Project Monarch, stuff like that. They use. Sensory deprivation, starvation, and when you get into a starvation state, you become highly suggestible. You become, it's not even like, you become suggestible because you become hyper aware and hypersensitive. When you're starving and you need food, sounds become, the, like the slightest sound, you're able to map out your environment with it. You're able to kind of feel the magnetic resonance around you much more. You become more in tune with your senses. Anybody who's done a prolonged fast knows this. You become very in tune, very dialed into the senses that you have. Um, it can also make you vulnerable, vulnerable to suggestion, open to manipulation, open to you know, the influence of whatever. Uh, for that reason, I think fasting should be used with caution and used for spiritual purposes. I mean, that's just me. The, yes, you can lose weight. You can fast safely, physically, and get great results. I just, I, I'm not, I don't know, I can't, <laughs> I feel like it would be immoral if I were to recommend fasting to just the general population. There's too many ways that it can go wrong, too many ways that people with eating disorders can get a hold of some of this justification and use it as a justification for binge eating and these crazy cyclical gain drop weight gain drop weight binge eat uh guilt shame cycles and uh, for that reason it's, it's it's a touchy subject now however I, I i understand there's loads of benefits to fasting um the whole autophagy thing uh, keeping mTOR and insulin super low and just really getting in there and you know eating up the weak parts of the body that need to be removed, that's a hey, powerful practice. But any powerful practice must be uh, must be done carefully. So tread lightly, tread carefully, and uh, yeah. MJ, physical G's and fanimal squads as also, also, blah, 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 blah. also, are you still selling maca? We do have some maca left. We don't have very much. We might, I think we might have like 100 units left. So for the next month or two, we will have maca. Um, one kilo bags that are cheaper than most one pound bags that you're going to find. And this is the highest quality premium maca that you ever be able to find. Um, yeah, there's probably stuff out there that will match this in quality, but nothing's going to exceed this. I mean, this is all hand selected, hand picked at peak ripeness, grown in an area where there's never been any pesticides used, where spring water feeds these things year round in this ancient volcanic soil. It's Powerful, powerful stuff. And it's not all watered down with maltodextrin and all the other crap. There's a lot of these exporters out of Latin America, a lot of the Chinese exporters that go and buy up material and water down fake material. There's so much filth on the market. It's ridiculous. 
I get heated just thinking about this stuff about the export market and the the organic export market because it's 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 pathetic sometimes, right? People, I've been working in exports for years. What people want, what most companies want, they want the cheapest material they can get. And that's how the market works, right? Of course, you want cheapest material with the highest markup. That's how it works. It's unfortunate for the consumer. It's unfortunate for people. I mean, you could buy a really expensive product. It's got all this amazing label. It looks all fancy, and it's in Whole Foods. Unfortunately, some of these companies, they're just buying the cheapest crap that they get from Chinese vendors and resellers who are will tell them what they want to hear. They want you to sell them the lowest quality, lowest price stuff and tell them that it's the highest quality they can get. So I have people, I don't even, I, I barely do it anymore because it's not even, it's not worth it. It's so, like the market is so saturated with low quality material that if you're, if you have any shred of dignity and any shred of um, any conscience about what you're selling, then you can't compete. It's really shitty. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. A lot of people watering down material, sending crappy stuff just to make a profit. Um, but can guarantee you that the maca we've got is the highest quality stuff available. 100% maca. There's no maltodextrin in there. They're not putting barley or wheat powder, which is like, come on. There's people who are buying maca. Half of them are probably on like a gluten-free diet. Most of them, yeah, most of them aren't gluten intolerant or not like celiac disease. But they're buying this product that it's being watered down with gluten <laughs> it's like it's crazy all right ridiculous mxm 168 what's up tristan finally catching you live what's up mxm glad you caught us um all right let's see let's see let's see coconut flour yay or nay coconut flour is a good one i like coconut flour any cheaper replacement for almond flour is the next part of the question coconut flour is a little cheaper than almond flour use that that reminds me of, of Jessica's forthcoming uh, book. We've been working on a baked goods cookbook, and it's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> that won't be out for a few months, though. We just released the Ketogenic Edge book. Okay. <laughs> Shadow Edgery 1. Coconut water is good for keto? No, unfortunately. Coconut water too sweet for keto. Drop the coconut water. Um if you're looking at coconut water as a source of electrolytes, you can get plenty of potassium from foods like avocado, salmon, spinach, pumpkin seeds. Um, magnesium, you can also get dietarily from leafy greens or simply supplement with magnesium, which is I get almost all my clients on a magnesium supplement. It's one of the only things, only supplements that I usually put people on is uh, you know, magnesium. A lot of times it can be good to get that from a supplement. Not big on supplements, vitamins, anything like that. But – that magnesium, as far as like vitamins go, can be very beneficial. All right, Luba Nowak. Dr. Nowak here, functional med doc. Take some iodine for your virus, 20 to 60 drops. Thank you for all you do. Blah, 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 blah. What virus? What are you talking about? Who are you talking to? Somebody complaining about a virus here? Are you talking because I got a stuffy nose? <laughs> Freaking weird people, man. All right, Danny Basquez, Simon, what do you consider? My name is not Simon. What do you consider long term? There are many people that have been on the diet for ten years, fifteen years, and a few forty years. No evidence of stomach cancer in those groups. All right, what are you? Who are you talking to? Someone talking about people getting bad results long term on keto? I don't know. All right, here's a question. Type 1 diabetic going on strict low-carb, high-fat, recently got problems with restless sleep, waking up several times at night, turning around. What is this? Some kind of a deficiency maybe? Yes. All right. So this has nothing to do with like the diabetic or whatever. And also, you have to understand, I'm not a medical doctor. I am not sanctioned by the medical priesthood. I am not a member of the medical clergy. I can't give medical advice. So this guy on YouTube, don't come to me for medical advice. But uh, yeah, if you're having – Problems waking up all the time, you're starting a low carb diet, it's probably a lack of electrolytes. So make sure you're getting enough sodium, magnesium, and potassium. Magnesium, I usually recommend supplementing with because it can be hard to get enough dietarily. Our soils are very depleted of it, and it's just not as uh, easy to get dietarily. So take a magnesium supplement, 400 milligrams, two times a day. Magnesium glycinate should help. Make sure you're getting enough sodium. Take, get at least two to three teaspoons of salt in per day. 
and that should help. That'll work. 90% of the time, it's just lack of magnesium. All right, all right. Autology Media asks, are you a reptilian? No, but well, thank you for asking. Cat C, greetings all. All right, let's see. Danny Vasquez, I personally wouldn't put an entire teaspoon on a meal. Many foods have sodium already, so salt to taste. No, <laughs> you definitely can put a teaspoon of salt on the meal. Most prepackaged foods have got a lot of sodium in them, but most whole unrefined foods are not high in sodium. A teaspoon of salt three times a day is not going to be harmful. People come, like, where do people come up with this stuff? You got Luba Nowak claiming to be a functional med doc, telling people to take iodine for viruses. Like, who, what is this? Some other guy telling people not to eat, <laughs> not to eat salt. All right, Susan, how do you like Ecuador? Have you been to Esmeraldas? I love Ecuador. That's why I live here. <laughs> I love life. And this is where life brought me. This is where I like to live. <laughs> um, would other people like it? No. Does my family even like visiting me here? <laughs> I don't know, but they do come. <laughs> I got their grandbabies here. Um, I love living in Ecuador. I love it. I love it. I love that. Like I can. I know everyone in this little town. This little town in the middle of nowhere. And go get in my truck, drive to town. You know, get hassled about you know wearing a seatbelt. There's no red lights. There's no. I mean, there's one light. There's two lights in town. Two lights in our entire town. Two stoplights. They're frivolous. <laughs> um, I love it. You know, it's like going back in time. It's a beautiful country, beautiful place with beautiful people. And I like living here. Have I been to, been to Esmeraldas? Yes. No, no, wait, wait. No, I've been to the coast, but not actual Esmeraldas. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard it's really nice. I don't like the humidity up there on the northern coast. I mean, the, the coast of Ecuador is incredible. It's like... I mean, the Pacific Ocean, everywhere, everywhere up there in the Pacific Ocean is incredible, right? Uh, Northern California, Southern California has got incredible beaches. Um, the further north you go, it just gets cold and beautiful, and the orcas and everything. And you come down here, down south, it's all warm. And yeah, I mean, the, the beaches of Ecuador, they're like, uh, they're like California beaches with less people, less people in the water and really warm weather, weather really warm water. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of mosquitoes. Ooh, those mosquitoes suck on the coast. The mosquitoes will eat you up. The mosquitoes will bite you through a sweatshirt on the coast. So it's so hot there and it's humid all the time that you don't want to be wearing a bunch of clothes, but then you get bit by mosquitoes all the time. You don't want to lather yourself up in, like, whatever chemical perfume crap that keeps them away. So, uh, yeah, I couldn't live on the coast. The jungle's kind of harsh, too, with all that humidity. Papers and books just shrivel up. Um, yeah, I dig it. All right, all right, all right. Jao Paulo Miranda says, Thank you very much, Tristan. I live in Lima, Peru. For sure, I will find all the ingredients in Jessica's ebook. Jessica's book. And buying it now. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, Lima, find all the ingredients, man. I mean, we can get it here. Vilcabamba, the Ecuador. Um, but how's everything in Lima? I heard that you guys got really, really intense flooding. I haven't looked at any of the images or, or I, don't know, I guess. I don't know. I don't really pay attention to the news or anything like that, but uh, I heard that the flooding was bad in Lima. I hope everything's okay over there. Uh, it'll definitely affect the whole export the export world. Expect chocolate prices to rise. As South America had a really harsh time with the rain this year. Okay. Julie Morris, are you familiar with the amazing liver and gallbladder cleansed by Moritz? I don't know that. Well, I don't know who Morris is. Makes the question though. Not familiar with him. Let's see what else. <laughs> what else we got here? So we got a lot of. There's a lot of people that they talk to each other in the comments. So it's hard for me to find questions. Sometimes. Aaron says I caved with fruity pebbles last night. Fruity pebbles. I used to eat those like every day, man. I was in high school. I just love those. I think I used to eat them in like college too. There's no excuse for eating. Like if you're over the age of 15 years old and you're eating fruity pebbles, uh, time to rearrange priorities. <laughs> right? Come on. Fruity pebbles. They are really good though. Huh? All right. 
Aaron, just get back on track, man. Keep moving. He says, I'll be 45 in May. Keto gave me a shredded body in six months. Yeah, buddy. Good job, man. You're all right. Little fruity pebbles. You caved in one time. It's all good. You learned a lesson. You learned your trigger. You probably learned that 10 minutes of that mouth pleasure doesn't really result in uh, feeling that great the next day. But uh, hey, nothing wrong with it. You'll be all right. All right. Danny Vasquez says, my wife also went keto with me. You have to be more patient. Her hormones are just, okay. You're talking to someone else. Geek me, Scott. Okay, been on keto about four to six weeks. I dropped 17 pounds. Wow, 17 pounds in six weeks. That's awesome, man. Now, I am for sure getting leaner. Not seeing the muscle as much as I thought I would. When would you more of the dramatic body results happen? All right, man. Patience, my friend. Look, you're getting leaner. That's fine. That's awesome. Enjoy the ride. Keep going. Keep moving forward. It happens when it happens. I don't know how much body fat you got. I don't know when you're going to start getting definition, seeing what you want to see. And you got to understand also that as a human being, uh, you might never see what you want to see when you look in that mirror. So you got to maybe get beyond the, the schism, right? You might not even, you're probably not seeing what other people are seeing when you look in the mirror. You probably look great, but you just think you're not good enough or whatever. We get trained through media through schools, through social crap, hierarchies of dominance on schoolyards and stuff like that. We get trained to have schisms in our perception of ourself, what we sound like, what we feel like, what we look like. And we hyper-focus on these things, and that's part of the tricks of that whole realm of hypnotizing the mind into hypnotizing you, into choosing patterns of behavior, and don't benefit you, don't benefit life, that you can't, you can't really enjoy long term. So, yeah. Let's see. The body results, you're never going to get the results you want as quick as you want. You got to accept that. So enjoy what you've got. Try to look at it from a, from a different perspective. Um Look at the progress you have made, appreciate it, and keep going. Look, it's like one day at a time, one meal at a time. What can I do today to continue getting the results I need? Don't look six months down in the future. I mean, what's the point of asking? When, you're basically asking me, when am I going to look in the mirror and like what I see? I can't tell you that, man. That's up for you to decide. you got to rearrange your relationship with reality, your relationship with the creator, your relationship with the mystery that we inhabit. Then you will see more clearly. And you won't stress the small things. You'll enjoy the ride because that's what it's all about. We gotta enjoy the ride. All right. Let's see. All right. Where'd my questions go? Come on. There it is. <laughs> Do you have any content in Espanol? No tengo con contento. <laughs> no tengo YouTube en español. Mi español. Yo puedo hablar bien, pero. Mi conjugación es muy malísima. Y uh, ya, yeah, yo, yo no voy a hacerlo en español. Los, uh, las palabras científicas son muy difíciles. Yo no sé los. Yo no conozco esa. All right. 47 here. Mi ma just began keto nine weeks ago. Down 22 pounds. Blood work turning around. Yeah, Danny. Good job, buddy. Keep it up, man. All right, all right. Let's see. Let's come down here. Does anybody else? Okay. Well, this, that's a question to everyone. See, we've got a lot of conversations. It's cool. We've got a little community here. People talk to each other. Somebody's asking if anyone else uses cannabis while on keto. Uh, that's an interesting comment. There's, there's a lot of people um, who've told me that they believe that cannabis has some synergy with ketosis. And when you actually look at what we know about like the effects of cannabis on the body, it does kind of make sense, right? Um, cannabis can increase AMPK. Uh, get you in that AMPK pathway, which is also activated by ketosis and can also influence the, uh, the GABA systems, which ketosis does. And um, there's, I mean, cannabis can actually make you burn fat. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there, there could be some interesting things going on there. 
I'm not saying that you guys should go use cannabis or whatever. I'm not a doctor or this, any of that nonsense. Um, all right. Jer and Amanda. Hey, from Canada. I've recently started watching all your videos. Wow. That was a lot. You're going to be so sick of me at the end of that. <laughs> I have multiple Facebook groups, keto. All are so conflicting. Thank you so much for your info. I'm understanding much more clearly. That's the point, right? There's so much conflicting information, nonsense out there. I'm just here to distill through my experience, my knowledge, what I have found works. Not just for me, like not just what, oh, this is what works for me, so i got to apply it to everyone else. From working with hundreds of clients through the years, this is what I've come to, the conclusions I've come to. And of course, we can always be wrong. We can always be proven wrong. We should always be trying to prove ourselves wrong and prove the assumptions that we've made before wrong. And the unfortunate thing with the internet is people like to play the game of being right. And I don't know. It leads to a lot of confusion. Everyone wants to be writer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone wants to find loopholes too, like pigeonhole people into stuff, and label things. The whole thing's crazy. The internet's ridiculous. So I'm here to filter through all the baloney and the BS and try to give you what I believe is the truth and uh, try to make things simple and at least make it simple for you guys to get results. So that's why I share this information here. That's why I like doing what I'm doing. All right. J. Patrick Campbell. Tristan, I used your, bro your bone broth recipe. It was amazing. However, I forgot it out on the counter all night at room temp. Is it ruined? Look, if you just left it out one night, if you just finished making that bone broth and you loved it, it was so good, and you put it in a jar or something and you let it cool overnight, it should be all right by the morning. Uh, but I don't know. Sometimes better safe than sorry. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a, an expert in the longevity of your food on the shelf. Sometimes I like, I'll err on the safe side with food. And I got dogs that'll sweep up the remains. So sometimes when they, when something comes in question, I just say, "Hey, let's give it to the dogs." I saw you talking. All right, Ali Aladwani. I saw you talking about how good the anabolic diet is. No, I never said it's so great. I was talking about how it's the original cyclical ketogenic diet, and it's different than a lot of people talk about. So I wasn't promoting that diet. Then I saw you talking about it's not for ninety five percent of people. Exactly, it's not for ninety five percent of people. I lost fat and kept strength on it, but I started wondering if I should change. All right, look, you lost fat, you gained, you kept strength, or you gained, yeah, you lost fat, you kept strength. It worked. It worked for you. Congratulations. You're part of the 5% of people who've got enough willpower and who do it right, who aren't just looking for the donut day, and uh, you did it right. You did a great job. So should you change? Hey, if you're getting results with what you're doing, I don't know if you should change. Do you want to change? Do you want to try something else? If so, perhaps you should. But look, man, I can't make that decision for you. Um, you're getting results, then, hey, you're getting results. If you're getting results, use what you're doing. Keep getting those results. Okay. Thank you for the question, too, man. Continue doing what you're doing. He says, by the way, I'm a power lifter. There you go. So for a power lifter, those extra carbohydrates, that's something like the anabolic diet by Mauro Di Pasquale, Pasquale, I don't know how to say his name, Pasquale. The anabolic diet can be a useful tool, and it is a cyclical ketogenic diet. All right. Do, do, do. MJ Physical G's says WTF, LOL. Oh, probably because he was talking to Thomas Mitteris, who says, OMG, am high now. <laughs> All right. Du, 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 du. Geek me, Scott. What are your honest thoughts on Jason Whitrock's one month, 4K calorie a day on the keto diet? What are your thoughts on his videos in general? All right. Um, 4,000 calories a day challenge. I got plenty of clients who would love to do a 4,000 calories a day challenge. They've been doing the 4,000 calories a day challenge for years, and that's why they got to where they're at. Um, Energy balance matters. Just because somebody on a specific training regimen, high volume of training, very muscular guy, just because somebody that's very muscular and training a lot can do 4,000 calories and not gain any, any body fat doesn't mean that calories don't matter. 
the amount of food I eat doesn't matter because a bodybuilder, you look at the guy, he's a, he's a bodybuilder. He's, he does the, the physique competitions and stuff like that. That's his thing. That's what he's into. Cool. You're into that? It's fine. Everybody knows my opinion on physique competitions and sanctioned eating disorder pageants and the freaking joke that the fitness industry is. Everybody knows my opinion on that. I'm not trying to like rip on somebody in specific. What I'm saying is the diet that worked for him is not going to work for you or me or other people. It was what worked for him. It doesn't disprove that, oh, calories don't matter. You can eat as much food as you want as long as it's just fat. That doesn't prove anything. So N equals one. It's not a scientific experiment. Somebody decided they're, they're going to eat a bunch of calories. They did a scan with this stupid scale thing. It's not accurate at all. And it told them what, what that he, it, at the end of it, it told them that he had lost point something percent of his body fat on this scale that's not accurate at all, much less accurate than a DEXA scale, as DEXA scan. And uh, there you go. And people are taking it as, oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't think it's, like it doesn't prove anything, right? What does it prove? It proves that this guy that trains like him, that's got the physique that he has, you know, that's got the hormone profile that he has, you know, because if you're, I mean, look, 90% of people not going to be able to look like him and be at that low body fat year round and have healthy hormone panel. So this, the scale that he stepped on said that he was 5% body fat. I'll tell you right now, he's not 5% body fat. That's ridiculous. Actual 5% body fat is like you're almost dead. <laughs> Actual 5% body fat is like Mr. Olympia guys getting up on stage. Some of them might be like 5 6% body fat. Real legit. Dexa scan. So, I mean, come on. I don't know. I probably, do I, I probably sound like a jerk right now. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just stating my opinions, right? I made a video talking about his keto challenge or whatever. And um, my thoughts are in that video. And I've pretty much repeated them here. It doesn't matter that it worked for him. It doesn't mean it's going to work for you. It doesn't mean that calories don't count. You need as much fat as you want and lose body fat. Half the clients I get have come to me because they've been eating two, 300 grams of fat trying to lose weight. They're like, why am I gaining body fat on keto? I thought calories don't matter as long as I don't eat carbs. And then they're gaining body fat on 80% fat. <laughs> it annoys me that people take it out of context. And he's probably not even trying to make the point that other people are making about his videos. Does that make sense? So I don't even think what he's trying to do is say that like, oh, calories don't matter. You can all just eat as much as you want. It'll work for you. But people take it that way. People take what he did and they're like, oh, it's awesome. It's amazing. He ate a bunch of food for 21 days and he didn't get fat. And he's a bodybuilder. And he's got the hormone profile, whether it's natural or assisted with a little help from my friends. Who knows? But what's important is that it wasn't a scientific experiment and it means nothing to the general population. Those are my thoughts. You asked my thoughts on his videos in general. I haven't really seen any of them except for the, the 21 day calorie thing. But uh, yeah, thanks for the question, man. Jaren Amanda, I understand that everyone's protein and fat grams are different. Well, it can be that different. I also understand to let my body use my own fat, but should the grams of fat I consume be higher than my protein grams to lose weight? <laughs> I don't know. It depends. It depends. It'll probably be. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You've got to look at what you're doing, how big you are, what your metabolism is at, what you've done in the past. I don't know. For most people, they'll have a few, like their fat grams will be a little bit higher than their protein grams for losing body fat. You know, um, yeah. I hope that helps. I, I, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know your context. I'm sorry, I can't give you. And you're trying to coax it out of me, but I just I can't see into your situation. I don't know what you need, Jaron Amanda. But best wishes to you on your journey. Good luck. You'll figure it out. Trial and error sometimes, right? Julie Morris says cannabis is a miracle medicine and it's a miracle medicinal compound for many people. I will not disagree with that. Uh, when you all right, so this is interesting, right? So ketogenic diet, highly effective against refractory epilepsy in children. Cannabis also highly effective against refractory epilepsy in children. Both of them controversial. <clears throat> 
one of them will get your children taken away by the child protection services. We'll put them in the hands of very often abusive foster homes, and they'll just be cycled through this abuse, this horrific um, thing if you try to give that to your kids who have epilepsy. Seriously, in many states in the United States, your children will be taken from you. People will come with guns and take your children away if you're treating their epilepsy with that specific medicine. The land of the free, the home of the brave, that can happen. Ketogenic diets also very um, uh, kind of frowned upon uh, among the medical community. But isn't it interesting that these both can treat refractory epilepsy and can help maintain stable brain chemistry in people who's – like it's hopeless. These people are living in a reality where they're constantly having seizures, constantly, and they're not able to, to identify the triggers all the time. But a ketogenic diet – and cannabis have both been known to help. All right. <laughs> Ali Aladwani says, thank you for reading my name correctly. I do my best. I'm glad I read it correctly. I hope I didn't just butcher it that time, though. <laughs> Janie Bug, my energy level is high. My grandkids cannot keep up with me. I love the lifestyle. Been keto over 16 months. 5'4", 124 pounds. Not bad for 59. Congratulations, your grandkids can't keep up with you. Time for you to start nicely, non-dogmatically and subtly, maybe helping their parents to shift their diet to something more nutrient-dense and whole foods, and then maybe they'll be able to keep up with you, man. Because you can see the kids, when they're eating the sugar, and they're ah, like just crashing on the crap, inflammatory foods, and there's nothing wrong with like, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with carbohydrates in general, but like, just the, the kids are just slamming the high fructose corn syrup. They just rev real high and then crash. Um, you see it. <laughs> it's funny. Your grandkids can't even keep up with you. Good for you. Stevia soda on keto. Good, bad, or indifferent? I don't know. What else is in it? Stevia is fine on keto. All right. Mark from Canada. You missed my question. Also, is dairy bad in your opinion? Because in starting keto, I ate a crap load of dairy. Mark, I don't know what your question is. Yeah, I missed it. I've got hundreds of questions here. So I'll answer the question that you just asked now. Don't get butthurt that I missed your other question. Everything's okay. Um, is dairy bad? No. <laughs> Dairy's not bad in and of itself. There's some people who have insensitive or who are sensitive to it who are not able to eat dairy. For those people, dairy is not good to eat. But if you can handle it, if you can eat dairy and be okay and regulate your intake because it can be very easy to eat to overeat cheese, to overeat heavy cream. It can be super, super easy to do because they're delicious. They're really palatable, and they've got a lot of calories and nutrients in them. So, uh, yeah, nothing wrong with dairy inherently. The results was it? Thoughts on a very low-calorie ketogenic diet for weight loss? Thanks. Context, 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 context. I mean, look, I mean, if you're I, just looking at your profile picture, Sarah, you don't look like somebody who only needs 800 calories. You look like you're fit and lean already. And then maybe 800 calories would be kind of like harsh, starving for you. I don't know. I mean, 800 calories, that's crazy low. For most people, I wouldn't utilize that low of a calorie diet. You get very lean without it. So, yeah. John E.M. Keto for eight weeks. Haven't seen results. I eat clean. 210-pound power lifter. I've been keeping macros in check. 160 to 180 fat. 130 150 protein. Less than 29 grams carb. I'm about to give up. Any suggestions? You've been on eight weeks. 210. All right. So protein for you sounds like that's about right. Probably don't need much more. Probably don't want to go less. Fat is what you would manipulate. If you're not hungry, drop grams of fat. You know, try 30 gram increments. Cut that down to 150 or 140 or 130. See what happens. Sharon, hi from New Zealand. Loving Jessica's cookbook. Question Do we need to have resistant starch like potato starch? That's a good question, man. See, that's like old school paleo type question. All right. First of all, Thank you for enjoying the book and for shouting out the book. I can't rave about it enough. Jessica put in so many hours on this book, and there's so much detail, and there's so much good content, and it's like almost 300 pages. 
So, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's incredible. It's awesome. Stoked that it's finally out. So, thanks. Um, and your question, do you need resistant starch? No, you don't. And many people get their guts really screwed up from that stuff. <laughs> um, Dr. Grace Liu, Grace L-I-U, she's got some interesting stuff about the, key, the, the gut microbiome resistant starch. I'm of the opinion that the whole resistant starch craze and fad was just that. It was a craze and a fad, and it could have damaged a lot of people's guts. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I'm not into the resistant starch. Fleet enema, does keto cause bad breath? Here's a good question. The keto breath when you're adapting, right? All right, so your, your breath can smell like acetone when you're on keto. It's like this fruity kind of smell. And as a byproduct of the breakdown of fatty acids, a byproduct of the breakdown of ketones, the breakdown of fatty acids into ketones, and it does go away. Does keto cause that? Well, keto will cause the creation of ketones, which will release acetone as a byproduct. So keto can cause high levels of acetone in the breath into the urine but it tends to go away and you will be fine all right luke armstrong realized keto sticks aren't super reliable but, we're, 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 but was wondering if you knew how much hydration affects the results hydration definitely affects the results do it when you're dehydrated then drink two liters of water and then do it again and watch you can dehydrate yourself into fake ketosis using those stupid keto sticks <laughs> It is real. What do you think medical experts say that keto diet makes your body too acidic? What medical experts say that? Uh, there's something called ketoacidosis, which is not caused by a ketogenic diet. It's caused by type 1 diabetes. It's when you got runaway gl uh, glucose production and your insulin resistance. You're not creating any insulin. So your, gl your glucose is skyrocketing and your body's creating a bunch of ketones at the same time. That can be dangerous. A ketogenic diet doesn't make your body acidic. All righty, righty. When you look at your own philosophy of keto, do you incorporate inflammation, adrenals, and mitochondrial function? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's the reasons why we would want to change our diet, to improve mitochondrial function, to improve the generation of energy, to lower inflammation. Have you not seen any of the videos I put out? <laughs> All right, C. Sailors. Fleet Cinema gives a thumbs up. Mark says, oh, I already answered that question. I think I've answered most of the questions. There might be a few way up. Like I, it gets cut off. I get so many comments that I can't even scroll up anymore. So I can't see the past stuff. So I'm sorry if I missed anybody's questions. I'm not ignoring you. Please don't get butthurt if I missed your question. Um, hey, sometimes I just don't feel like answering certain questions too. You know, um, it's been an awesome day though. I don't know. I'm about to go spend the rest of it with my family. So it's been really, really nice talking to you guys, being able to share information with you guys, and hyping up the cookbook a little bit. Thanks for everybody for agreeing with me and my praise of Jessica for the cookbook. Um, the only place you're going to find the Ketogenic Edge cookbook, the training manual for low-carb ketogenic and paleo cuisine is primaledgehealth.com. You're only going to find it there. Um, so we've talked about a lot of things today. Talk about a lot of common mistakes that people make doing keto, and hopefully have helped some people to address any issues that they were having. I really hope that people were able to pull some good information from this and uh, and enjoy it. So thank you so much for joining me, everybody. And let's see. Mark's still complaining that I missed one of his questions. Come on. I can't get all the questions. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thanks for enjoying the hangout. Thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, if you want to be notified beforehand, if you want a notification of when I'm going to do the next live hangout so you can ask questions, go to primaledgehealth.com where the Ketogenic Edge Cookbook, training manual for ketogenic low-carb and paleo cuisine is also available exclusively. Go to go to primaledgehealth.com and on the right hand side there will be a little sidebar you can sign up to get notifications we'll send you a newsletter notifications before we do these hangouts so thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for supporting our work for supporting our family and for those who have bought the ketogenic edge cookbook and left positive reviews thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do that we really appreciate we really appreciate you leaving reviews. We know it takes time. We know it takes energy. Um, 
and we really appreciate it. Lorene says, you and your family are amazing. Thank you so much. Love the cookbook. Recommend to all. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are amazing. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. I'll see you next time. Join us next time. PrimalEdgeHealth.com is where the cookbook's available and where you can sign up to be notified before the next live Hangout Q&A session. So signing out from the muddy, rainy, but right now really nice and temperate Andes of Ecuador in a little village that you probably can't even find on the map. Sign it out. This is Tristan from PrimalEdge.com. PrimalEdgeHealth.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.